Attention students, attention students, this is your principal speaking. We interrupt your normal Zoom time schedule to bring you this official Marshall emergency broadcast. Please remain calm. The rumor of zombies is entirely a hoax. I repeat, the rumor of zombies is, is entirely a, uh, uh, ah, help me. Good morning, viewers. Happy Halloween to you in our overpopulated virtual world. I'm Oliver Plath, coming to you from my COVID-19 bunker deep in the heart of LA. Welcome to this week's edition of Campus News During Quarantine. And I'm Kimberly Davila, coming to you from a shiny spot in Silver Lake. Welcome to our first pandemic episode of Campus News, where we bring you the latest news that matters to John Marshall High School and its surrounding communities. Yes, even if we are trapped, we're trapped together. Miles away from Kimberly physically, but spiritually, we're together right now. The elephant in the room is COVID-19, such a small beast, but we're all making it work. Which brings us to our first segment of the year, the good, the bad, and the ugly of online learning and life in quarantine. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, I'm Lola, and today I'm going to be interviewing Mr. Finn about how teaching is going during the pandemic. Say hi. Hello barristers. We miss you here on campus. The place is kind of lonely without any students around. So the first question I have for you today is Zoom effective for you at all for teaching any of your classes? And is it proving more effective in certain classes or less effective in others? Zoom is... You just froze! You just froze, you just froze on my screen. You, you, start, you were like, Zoom is... <laughs> I'd like to answer your question about how effective Zoom is, but the fact of the matter is I can't find a spot out here where the Wi-Fi is really working and I keep freezing. So uh, Zoom is minimally effective. Look, this semester is better than last semester. We have a schedule, like there are grades, attendance is taken. There's an improvement over March and April and May of 2020, but this format leaves more to be desired than than it offers as far as options for effective education. Some parts of Zoom, like meet some meetings, um, some communication with parents, I think it's going to be here to stay. But the thing about any school setting, any classroom, is the fundamental effectiveness of that classroom is a trained teacher in the same space as students who are ready to learn. Zoom Zoom comes up short in in as far as a platform by which to educate students it just comes up short. Okay, and in terms of cameras, does it bug you when your students don't turn their cameras on or does it make you feel better when more students do have their cameras on? It it certainly makes me feel better when there are more cameras on. But I have been in situations where we break out rooms, smaller classes, where kids turn on their cameras and, you know, grandma's behind them or this little sibling is zooming uh, from the same kitchen table and uh, there's someone yelling down the hall. And so I feel like I would, I like to see people's faces. I really love to see people's faces, but I understand the student, the need that students have for privacy. They don't feel comfortable turning on that camera. I'm down. I understand. I get it. Okay. And the last question that I have for you is what or who do you miss most? Well, I hope you have a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Tough one to respond to. I miss so much. Um, um, so it's great to be back on campus. Even if often the campus has like dark hallways, there's about probably 20, 25 teachers who, um, who come to school every day. And, it, you know, with the exception of me, it's kind of the cool kids, you know, Mr. Boyd, Mr. Brock, Ms. Diamond. Like, it, it's, it's great to be on campus and get to see some of my colleagues. Because um, I actually missed, you know, I missed this. 
I miss the campus. And um, so it's great to be back on campus now. That was a step in the right direction. But uh, once I got on campus, I realized I actually missed the uh, the students. Yeah, I miss the students an awful lot. I just miss that, what everybody misses. You know, they, they miss that interplay of energy. Like this is, it's a beautiful campus, but it's honestly just a collection of bricks without like the 2,400 students that are supposed to be attending here, the, the 100 staff members, the custodial staff, the clerical staff, like, it's 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 the reflection of an awesome community, but without the people in it, it's it's just built in 1931. You know, there are um, there are parts of this experience that I know will make us like a better community. Will you know, our educate? I think teachers' ability to interact to, to to mix what we've learned about Zoom and all these applications that we had no idea about in the middle of March, like when we come back on campus, I think the, the, the teaching level is going to be like fantastic. It's going to be so great to get back and sort of use some of these skills that we've learned, these technological skills, but then also have that ability to connect with the kid, like be right there. No, 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 right there. I'm, you know, like be able to point at the place where the kid is. And of course I'm a teacher, so I'm just sort of rambling, but I guess that's what I miss the most. I guess I miss being able to do my job the way I've done my job here at Marshall High for decades. Um, it's been fine learning a new set of tools, but I'm done. I want kids back on campus so that we can begin to to do what it is that we've done so well for so long here at Marshall High. Okay, thank you so much for participating and for telling us how you feel about quarantine and online learning. Great to great to see everybody digitally. Looking forward to the day where that's not always the case. Bye. Bye. 2020 has been quite the year for us all. Our nation has been experiencing a social and political reckoning, bringing us face to face with our complicated history, fraught with discrimination and violence, but also on occasion, a fundamental transformation. Reporters Donovan and Lola are here to present one of the Marshall's amazing clubs, Students Deserve. These barristers have been working steadily since last spring, as well as over the summer, to lead and support another chapter of transformation in our shared American history. What's up, everyone? I am Donovan Miller from Campus News, and I am here with... Hi, I'm Lola, also from Campus News. Um, I'm Marianne, and I'm a leader from Students Deserve. I'm Nicole, and I'm also a leader from Students Deserve. Uh, I'm Kat, and I'm also a leader from Students Deserve. I'm Quinn, and I am a leader from the BSU. And we're kind of just having a little interview questionnaire type thing. So uh, how's everybody doing today? You guys feeling good? Yep. Yeah. Oh, cool. Pretty good. So let's start with the first question. Um, so I'm going to start with Student Deserve first. Um, so tell me a little bit about your club. What is it about? What do you guys do? So Marshall Students Deserve is a small chapter of the bigger organization of Students Deserve. We are working towards making Black Lives Matter in schools. And right now we are fighting to defund um, LA school police and invest all of that money and more into support for Black students. That sounds really awesome. So when did you guys start this program? So actually, like this was started by some students already graduated, but um, it started around 2016, uh, four years ago, here at Marshall. And is there anything specific that you guys discussed during meetings, or is it kind of just like a general, broad topic? So basically, in meetings, um, you know, we kind of prepare for the meetings like beforehand, and we kind of go over an agenda. Sometimes the agenda comes from the other students or chapters themselves, but sometimes we have to make our own. Um, we do, you know, inform students of like what we're doing at Marshall. And then sometimes we inform them of other dates that are upcoming, like general assemblies, which are things that we do with other schools where we meet with them and talk about what we do as a chapter and school wide. Awesome. That sounds really cool. You guys have anything else to add? You good? Okay, cool, cool. So Lola, do you think that we are done? Are we good? Yeah, but quickly, right before we finish, if you guys have any messages you'd like to send before we finish this little segment, go ahead and share that now. Um, okay, Students Deserve meets every Wednesday on Zoom, and you can check us out on our Instagram, jmhs.sd. The BSU meets at lunch uh, every Tuesday, 12 to 12 30. And we have an Instagram to check us out on uh, jmhs.bsu. Uh, definitely give us a follow. Come check us out. Okay. 
thank you guys so much for coming. We're so glad that we got to hear from you guys and you got to promote your clubs. Remember that these clubs do kind of work together and do focus on a few of the same issues. So if you are a student activist or if you are interested in student activism, please consider joining these clubs and checking them out on Instagram. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you. One of the most recent conflicts strikes at our hearts here in Los Angeles, the conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh, known by many of us as Artsakh. Recently, large protests in Los Angeles and other world cities have brought attention to this underreported conflict. Here is Petros Pedrosian, Ms. Fondipian. Hello and good morning, Campus News. I am Petros Pedrosian, interviewing the lovely Ms. Fondukian about the current situation in Armenia. I wanted to ask you, are you aware with the current events happening in Armenia right now? I am. I am. It's not talked about very much in the media, but absolutely I'm paying attention, as could, everybody should be. Could you give our audience a little background history about the war? So in 1915, as I'm sure everybody has learned in their world history classes, uh, there was the first modern genocide of the 20th century, which was carried out against Armenians, which are an indigenous population. And it was carried out by the Ottomans and then continued by the Turkish government. We look at genocide, we have 10 stages, the final ones being extermination and denial. They wiped out most of the Armenians, they pushed them out of the country and to so much that that part of the world does not have that many Armenians left. That trend continued in Azerbaijan. So Azerbaijan after 1915 in the early 1920s was also carrying out attacks against Armenians within that region all the way through the 1990s. In the 1920s, something really important happened and there's this Armenian area called Artsakh, that whole area, as I said, it's indigenous Armenians. The Leninist Stalinist plan was to number one, divide populations and number two, make nice with Turkey. So they gave a chunk of Armenian land to the Soviet Azerbaijani Republic and Azeris are Turkic peoples. Mm -hmm. So when the Soviet Union fell apart, there was this whole rush for self-determination, for freedom. Armenians in the area called Artsakh or nagorno karabakh it's the same thing. And, and that's right behind me. They said, we want to be an independent republic, just like the Americans did, just like all Latin American peoples did. They said, this is our turn. This is, we want our freedom. We've been oppressed. Armenians were again attacked. There was a war and then there was a ceasefire. Lately, end of September, it was broken for the final time with a full on attack by Azerbaijan, helped by Turkey and supplied by um, Israel and the United States actually uh, to carry out a massive offensive against Armenians in that region. The organization Genocide Watch just stated that this area now is at the threat of the ninth and 10th stages of genocide once again. Have you done anything to support the war? Uh, I have kept our faculty informed about what is going on. I created a Twitter account for this very reason to contact public officials. I've been very active in sending letters to public officials. There have been many demonstrations. In fact, I think Armenian youth in front of the federal building are staging a hunger strike right now. Yeah, I've also been donating and um, every now and then I post something about the current news because I feel like it's a topic that many people aren't talking about. Everybody says, how could people let it happen? It's our job to let as many people know as we can. Has this affected you or maybe your family, the fact that there's a war? It's affected us emotionally. I don't have family members in Artsakh. I don't know, do you? From my father's side are in the war right now. Really wow, war. so how are you holding up? <laughs> it's been tough, definitely. Just because I, I can't like really get it out of my mind and if it was up to me and I was old enough, I myself would, without hesitation, go there. The only thing you can do right now is support them and stay hopeful. Yep, it's, it's inspiring what they're doing, that's for sure. But for us, it's maybe we feel so helpless. So every day that we wake up, it's like this grief. Maybe some of the, the adults that you know would know how Americans shaken to their core after 9-11 we kind of have that every single day. Why should we, as in the people in America or other places around the world, care about what's going on in this tiny 
country in the Middle East? Well, I think there are two ways of looking at that. Actually, there are probably more than two ways of looking at that. This isn't just about Armenians. This is about humanity. So either you care about humanity or you don't care about humanity. As Americans, if we care about these ideals of the United States, like freedom and the Declaration of Independence, here you have a small country that is trying to do just that. The United States has been giving all sorts of military aid to Turkey and Azerbaijan. As an American, I don't want my tax dollars to be supporting these causes. We are, this is a global society in many ways. And yes, this is a result of extreme nationalism. What we're seeing in the world today is a trend toward extreme nationalism. Genocide is like the ultimate expression of extreme nationalism, isn't it? It's not just an issue about that country. It's more of a humanitarian thing. The war crimes, as you said, breaking the ceasefire, hypocritical if we were to just leave a blind eye towards it. Wouldn't it be great if we could say, this country stopped the genocide? Now, what we've learned so far from genocide is that it works. Nobody stops it. Wouldn't it be great if the world stopped it? If you could have a quick word to our audience, maybe your opinion, maybe some advice, maybe something you need them to hear. What would it be? For the Armenians, I'll say Hachtelwink. At least I hope so. I like that answer. Okay. For everybody else, pay attention, know what's going on in your world. When we all treat each other the right way, these things won't happen. And let's hold our leaders accountable. Let's hold them to the same standard we hold ourselves. Hey, athletes and sports fiends. Yes, I did it. Fully ripping Halloween puns for Mr. Boyd. For a less creepy crawly sports report, here's volleyball player and campus news reporter Lola Babich bringing you the latest news in martial sports. Hi everyone, my name is Lola from Campus News and today I'm going to be interviewing Victor and Manahan, two of the volleyball coaches here at Marshall. Hi, um, my name is Coach Manahan and I am the coach for both the girls and boys volleyball teams. And I am Coach Victor. Uh, I'm going to be coaching uh, the girls volleyball, probably concentrating on varsity this year. Cool. Okay, so the first question I have for you is what can sports be like during COVID-19 and distance competition slash participation? Um, well, this year for athletics, we're in uncharted territory. We have to follow a lot of new rules. When we travel to competitions, we're only allowed to have a, um, actually 13 people on a bus. So that means for volleyball anyway, we'll have 12 players and coaches. When we're at competitions, we're not allowed to shake hands. There's also going to be testing protocols, so even just to get to campus to, to start conditioning before we practice, you're going to have to be cleared, plus random testing once everything gets started. So there's all kinds of new rules, and we're just going to take it as it comes and do our best. Okay, cool. Um, the next question I have is for Victor. Are there any updates about what student athletes can do to participate and prepare for next season? Yes, we have a few uh, different things you have to do. Uh, first, you have to make sure you keep your grades up. Uh, you have to get your paperwork done. So that includes getting, uh, filling out your physical, getting your physicals done. We're also gonna need to be doing testing. Um, everyone's gonna have to be tested, including the coaches. And also we need to get consent from parents that make sure that you're, they're allowing you to participate in the sport, right? Um, and the other thing is just staying safe and start preparing physically as well. So we are, you know, start working out, doing something um, outdoors, preferably, so that you can be ready to go. It's going to be a shortened season, and um, you know we have to make sure that you're ready to go when it starts. Yeah, hang in there, student athletes. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me and for willing to be interviewed for Campus News. Stay safe. Goodbye. Well, there you have it. We cobbled another episode together with ones and zeros, miles apart at glacial speeds, battling COVID and the challenging conditions at home, just like you. And just like you, we're not giving up. Whatever you may be going through, we want you to never forget that you are not alone. Everyone is going through tough times right now, but we get through one day at a time, one step at a time. You are strong barristers. You've all overcome many obstacles in your life. And if we can get through an impossible week for this episode, you can keep pushing too. Work hard, barristers. We're only as strong as the number of cameras in our Zoom rooms. Take care of your body, take care of your mind, and do things that make you happy. We will all get through this.
if you want to hear the full interviews and extended stories, please check out the playlist on our YouTube channel. Uh, uh, uh.